Good morning and welcome back to Suburban Home Center, Wyoming, Arizona. This is Sandy. Today I'm painting. Actually, I've been painting for the last few days because I felt so much better than I had before. And so um, today I'm reviewing some, some brushes that I received and you can use these for acrylic, oil, or watercolor. They're very small brushes. They're made out of sable and some of the features that I like about this is this right here. It's a great way to hold your brush. It's like holding a pencil, which makes it really easy. It's real comfortable, especially if you're painting a lot. And, and these brushes are made by a uh, Fumui. Let me show you that. I can focus. And what I'm making today are some little gift cards and they do have an envelope and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint right on on top of this now this is not watercolor stock I do have cards that are watercolor stock this is just um, a regular card stock I bought these at Hobby Lobby um, as long as I don't use too much paint at one time I, I let them dry in between colors it works fine otherwise it wants to kind of warp the paper does which you can always use an iron to iron that or flatten them with some books. It's all fixable. But I wanted something for an art show that I'm in for when people buy gifts that I could have an original watercolor on there. And they're the perfect size that if you're doing a gift card, it would fit in there. So these Fumui brushes are perfect size for something so small. So I'm going to do a couple of the watercolors. Then I'm going to show you all the different ones I did. I think I did probably five, six different ones. And I'm going to, then I'm going to let you know what I think of the brushes. And link below, you can get a discount. You know how that usually works. And let's see what I think. I want to show you one brush though. If you haven't painted with a watercolors or not very very much anyway this can be so helpful when you're trying to get into little tiny spaces around something and you wouldn't think it make much difference but it does and so I appreciate that this one was in the stack and all of them have their numbers so you know the size of the brush it is for the most part today, I'm going to be using a number one. And the other one I'm going to be using is a number one, but it's a different shape. So this is more pointed. I love brushes with a slant. It's just so easy to curve around when you're painting. And I really appreciate that in a brush. So let's do some fun painting. Then I will tell you what I thought of the brushes. So I'm going to work on two of them at a time. That way some of the colors can, the watercolor can dry while I'm working on the other one. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pine cone. And I'm using a raw sienna. And I like to work pretty fast. So I'm just, I'm just making parts of the pine cone. Now afterwards I will, um, add some color into it and I'll add some other darkness in there and we're just going to work our way down the pine cone and I've found that the faster I go the better I like it now of course sometimes you um you look at it and you, you'll notice oh I gotta do some other darkness or colors in there but this brush works very well. It picks up a lot of paint at one time, even though it's small. And at first, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what I'm doing, right? Um, I'm making the little parts of the pine cone. And when we start to add some other colors in there, then you'll really be able to tell because a pine cone comes up and it kind of curves around here and then it goes back into the center. They're never even which makes every pine cone unique and I like that part 
And when I get down to the bottom, I'm just going to add just some squigglies. Now, that really has to dry for a little bit. But while it's drying, I'm going to first rinse my brush out. And I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness down in here. Just because I want it to few little dots different places so it kind of looks like it goes back into itself and I'll rinse my brush out again and I'm gonna switch over to a darker brown and I'm just gonna add some of that in there and then we're just gonna let that dry while we're working on the other one part of the fun of watercolor is that it moves around a little bit. So I'm going to take this over to the side. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And this one, we're going to make a Christmas tree. So, and I am just working fast again. We're just making our um, Christmas tree come out. We're leaving some spaces. I'm going to use more water on this one than I did on the other one. Grab some more paint from up there. And all of these that I'm doing, I'm actually going to add ink with them too. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water because I want it to just move around a little bit. And let the watercolor do its little magic that it does. See how it's starting to run? And so we're going to just put that along in here. Grab some more of that paint from up there. Move that around. I don't want really a lot of sharp edges inside the Christmas tree. We're just going to let that sit. So let's go back to our other one. You can see where it's starting to dry a little bit. But I'm going to start adding some color and then I'll come back and add more brown in there. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of light blue in some spots where we have those front parts of the pine cones. And then I'm going to, I'm going to add a little bit of red in there too. I like adding colors into my pine cones and when I go to put the ink on there that can really make it pop and change okay and I need some yellow too so I'm gonna have to grab a little bit of yellow and I'm rinsing my brush in between there and I'm filling part of that back part that goes back to the center of the pine cone with that now I'm going to stop filming for just a little bit because I need those to dry and then we will paint a little bit more. Now it's dried a little bit. I don't want it completely dry and I'm just adding a little bit of darker green in some spots of it. Just letting it get some more contrast in there. Okay, And I have switched brushes so now I'm using the number one and with the slant and let's go get some other darker brown just I am not gonna fill in all of this part of it will stay white and I find that more interesting And then we're going to let that dry again. Now both of them are getting drier. And so I'm going to start adding some little bulbs onto the tree. I always like to use odd numbers. I find it a little more interesting. I'm going to add a little bit more red onto the red parts and a little more blue onto the blue parts just to make them a little more vibrant. 
Let me rinse that out again. Just probably a little more brown, that darker brown, just to give it more contrast in some parts. I'm going to add a star on top of the Christmas tree. Move this out of the way. And stars are really easy because I'm just going to make upside down V. And then I'm going to come across. And then I can just kind of fill it in. And when I put the, the ink on there, it, I'll go around the star and it'll really make it pop in there. Now you could use a lot of different colors in here. Like I could, I could add some blue bulbs. And you could have them different sizes. I think actually I'm going to go with a little bit darker blue. Give it a little more... Oh, that's going to spread a little bit. It's alright, I can pick that up. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my bigger brush. I have it wet, but then I'm going to dry it. And then I'm just going to literally pick up the paint. This is when I get impatient and I should have let it dry a little bit more so it wouldn't run with the green. I'm going to just take that and I'm going to just move that around a little bit, adding more color into the, the Christmas tree. Go around that blue because it wants to run a little bit. Go around that red. Then I'm going to let that dry. Let's smooth that edge out. On this one, which I didn't do on my other Christmas trees. I think I'm going to add some white in there. And I do have some watercolor that's white, but it, which isn't gouache. Usually I like to leave the white spaces itself. But if I wanted to add, say, some snow onto my Christmas tree, I could just, just tap some of that white. Where it's not quite dry, it won't hold on to it. And I'm not adding any water with my on my brush just because I want that snow to be a little bit thicker. And you can do multiple coats to to do that. Now up here, let me show you. It's it's way too wet. It won't stay very well. But it can do I can get a base layer on there just make it a little more interesting. Let's cut we'll come back when they're much more dry. Now if you're in a hurry to dry them you can always take a hair dryer and hold on to the the card or the watercolor paper and dry it. I just happen to like it when it dries its own process. You can see I added some more white, um, added a little bit more um, bulbs in there and you could just leave them just like this. You could have your cards just like this and they'd be perfectly fine. Um, one of the things I like to do is use a micro pin. And this is um, a 05. And I like to go around them. But you could also use either a silver um, pen or a, a gold pen. Either one of these would, these are by Pilot, and um, I've used those lots of times too. But for the most part, when I'm doing my little watercolor cards, I like to add lines in there. I love the idea of that you're using your watercolor paint, and then you're going to add another dimension to it. So let's do this real quick. Now I find the faster I work, the more I like it.
And so I'm just kind of wanting to um, define that pine cone shape in there. Um, it, it makes it, for me, more interesting. Um, it's total preference. You know, you could have just as easily left it how it is on the bottom part. But I just happen to like the way that ink adds some more to it. But totally up to you. And um, then next I'm going to show you all the different ones that I made so far. I still have a week and a half, and so I might make a few more. But see how... And then, of course, I put my initials. And it just makes a fun little card. An original watercolor that somebody could actually get one of those little frames and frame it afterwards. Let's do our little... See how we can just go around that star and all of a sudden that star stands out. And then we can just add into our Christmas tree. Now, if, I have to go over there. I picked up a little bit of watercolor. It wasn't all the way dry. See if you go around that, see that's not dry yet. So then I gotta take my pen over to the side with a piece of paper and draw on it. So this one I'm probably gonna have to wait to finish it. But I'll show you the other ones until you'll get the idea. Yep, and see if it has too much water on it, the ink won't pick up. There, I let it dry just a little teeny bit, and then I could draw it on there. These are my two new cards using my new brushes from Fumui. Um, I love it. I just love them. Well, I hope you like those. I'm totally excited about them. I've shown them to a couple artist friends of mine, and they like them. And so, what is my honest opinion about these brushes? Um, I really like them. For the price, I think they're really really good. Um, I wish the handle was a little bit heavier, but that's more a personal preference. And I just, I like a sturdy handle. Um, it's very light, and if you were painting a long time, you would probably appreciate that. But that is probably my only complaint. Um, I've used almost all the brushes in some of my paintings that I've been working on for a show that I have in a week and a half. But um, I have to say I really like them. Honest opinion, I really like them. I'll have a link below if you want to check them out. And um, thanks so much for sending me the brushes. I appreciate it. Um, I will continue to use them. And they work perfect with my little cards. So everybody have a great day. I will see you next time. Paint something beautiful today.